What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today for my top 10 comic books I picked up in 2022. This is a top 10 list, but these are in no particular order. Uh, I have them grouped essentially by one really big category, a smaller secondary category, and then a one off. Uh, so these are in no particular order at all. These are just the 10 favorite books that I picked up throughout the year of 2022. I like to do these videos as kind of like a little documentation thing. It's fun to go back and actually look at the older ones. I did something similar to this last year. And it's just interesting to kind of see the collecting journey. One of the other intriguing things is this complete tangent uh, that I enjoy when I go back and glance at an older video, sometimes for reference, uh, sometimes, to, you know, what did I say about something? Or I don't do it often, but on occasion, I do need to go back and look at something. It's intriguing watching the cards that I have on display across the desk change over the years that I've been doing this for now. That's also like a little interesting time capsule. Like I go back and look at it and I remember why, like I had those certain things on there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Like I said, no particular order here. I have them grouped up a little bit. You'll be able to see the trend fairly quickly here. I will try to talk about prices paid for these. I don't remember when I grabbed all these. Uh, some were very early in the year, but these were kind of all purchased throughout the year. Some fairly recently, just kind of depending. So first up, we have in group number one, we're going to call this the Spider-Man pile because there is a decent amount of these. I grabbed an ASM 300 this year. Picked this up in a 9.6. I actually grabbed this at the Shipshawana card show. Did not expect to walk out of there with this. Uh, I think this was either the spring show. I think this was the spring show, the March show. So I grabbed this back in March, beginning of the year. I paid $17.50 for this. Uh, as of right now, the last sale is at $1,300 ish in December. Uh, so this is definitely trended down quite a bit. The 90 day average is sitting at about $1,450. Um, but I don't really care. Absolutely iconic book. It was actually quite a bit higher. It had come down quite a bit when I bought it, um, but still had some room to come down. Fairly common. There's a lot of these in a 9.6. I've always wanted one, and I knew I was never going to want to pay the 9.8 price. So when I ran across one at the time was priced very, very fairly, I had to go ahead and snag it. Next on the list, another Spider-Man book. And once again, absolutely iconic McFarlane cover. This was actually the last one that I got that kind of completed my symbiote run. Uh, what I mean by that is, I had a little personal collection goal with ASM 252 and Secret Wars 8, which I had picked up last year. I had picked up the ASM 300. And one of the big ones that I was missing was this one, an amazing Spider-Man 316. This is the first cover appearance of Venom, an absolutely iconic McFarlane cover. This was a My Slabs purchase that I picked up, I believe, over the summer, uh, sometime in the middle part of the year. Pretty good deal on this. I got this for 780 bucks. At the time, it was well under market value. 90 day average on this is sitting at 731, but there is a December sale at 565. So sitting somewhere around in there. Uh, very popular book, iconic cover. Uh, it is one that a lot of people chase. And like I said, I really needed this one to kind of finish off my little mini symbiote run that I had going on here. Next on the list, also pick this up very early in the year. This one is actually held up um, pretty well, considering how long ago I got it. This is an ASM 238, one of the most iconic Spider-Man covers. First appearance of a Hobgoblin. Grab this in a 9.6. Uh, once again, this is one that I always wanted, but I knew I was not going to want to pay the 9.8 premium on. So I went with the next best option in a 9.6. I picked this up for $777. This also was a My Slabs purchase. Uh, last 
value on this one last sale in December was 765. And like I said, I bought this pretty early in the year. So this has actually held up pretty well. The 90 day average is actually at 920. Um, so has held up pretty well considering most stuff has come down a lot throughout this year, especially stuff bought early in the year, but iconic cover ripping the, the, the costume in half. A big thing with this one is the tattoo that's inside, whether or not it is included. That concludes kind of section one, and that was a bunch of Spider-Man books. Next, we're going to move into the one-off. Uh, the one-off, let's slide these to the side here. Make, all right, I'll put them this way. Make a little bit more room. If I have to take them off camera, I will. Uh, the next one is an Avengers book, one that I really wanted to pick up. This is Avengers number eight, first appearance of Kang. This was a more recent purchase, late summer, early fall. I don't remember the exact date. First appearance of Kang, CGC 3.5. This book is from 1964, but white pages. Uh, and it is definitely pretty rare to see stuff this old still maintain white pages. Also presents extremely well. Uh, it has some color loss here, uh, or some some color break and stuff along the spine is not great. That's probably why it's getting the grade that it did. But generally speaking, if it's just sitting on a shelf or you're looking at it, there's a crease across the corner there. Uh, but it presents really, really good. The colors are really, really good. Uh, the white looks nice and crisp. The Avengers looks really good. The yellow and the green uh, book presents extremely well. Paid $7.50 for this. Pick this up on Instagram. 90 day on this one is 681, so it's come down a little bit. Uh, and the last sale on this one is sitting at about 450. The only thing I'll put a little caveat on that is these lower grades, you will see a big fluctuation in sales depending on how well they present. Uh, not all three fives are created equal. And even at the time, I paid a little bit of a premium on this one for the white pages and the fact that it looked so good. Uh, I think Kang slash Jonathan Majors is going to be playing a major role in the MCU as we know it going forward. And I really enjoyed his character in the Loki series. So I'm very happy to ride this one out. And even though I am giving prices, anyone that's watched the channel for a really long time knows that I do not necessarily buy comic books to flip them. In fact, I have never sold a CGC book that I own. Uh, I buy them and then they go into the collection. I view them all as long-term holds, essentially. Uh, I am definitely much more of a comic collector than a comic flipper. Uh, but that's just, for, who knows? Would I sell something if I needed to? Absolutely. But comic books are very low on my list of things that I would potentially sell. Next up, one that kind of everyone needs. Now we're transitioning into the next little group, and that is going to be all X-Men books, which once again, anyone that's watched me for a while knows I'm a huge fan of X-Men. Anyone that's even just seen that corner already knows. Uncanny X-Men 266, first appearance of Gambit. This was a pickup from Heroes Con in Charlotte. Uh, Grab this off of a vendor. I paid $8.50 for this one. 90 day average is sitting at $7.90. Last sale in December is sitting at $730. This book has slowly come down since the summer, uh, but this was a lot, lot higher at its peak. Iconic book. You got to own it. If you're going to go for something like this on the ultra modern side, you definitely want to aim for a 9.8. Pay the premium if you're looking at investment grade. There are a decent amount of these on the census for sure. So you want to make sure you shoot for the 9.8 or at least a newsstand. I'm not real big on newsstands personally. I just prefer the non-newsstand look with the emblem down on the corner. I, don't, I would rather buy more books than pay a premium for the newsstand edition. That's just me, though. Next is a tandem. We'll take them in order. I picked the first one up earlier in the year and then hunted the second one the back half of the year and finally found one at the right price. First up, Uncanny X-Men 141. Part one of Days of Future Past, iconic X-Men story, iconic X-Men cover. Uh, one of the most popular X-Men covers that's probably out there uh, with the whole, you know, all the dead X-Men with Wolverine and Kitty Pride as the last surviving two. Um, this cover has been homaged a absolute ton. Uh, I got this pretty early in the year, actually. This was a A1 purchase, I think. 
from an IG sale? I don't remember. I think I got this from A1. Uh, I could be wrong on that one. Paid $9.50 for it. Uh, last sale is $9.75 in December. 90-day average is $8.85. So considering how long I bought this one, because I definitely bought this very early in the year, this has held up extremely well. And then you can't just have this one. You also have to have 142 to go with it. This one I picked up at eBay auction fairly recently, actually. This is one of the last comics that I think I actually bought. I got this in October at auction for 416, and that's about what they still go for is right around 400. This is actually a lot more lower in census than this one is in a 9.8, and I actually really like this cover too. I generally keep this on display right below my HasLab Sentinel. Uh, just because of the cool, you know, once again, Wolverine just getting absolutely blasted with Storm getting all jacked up there in the corner. Great cover, great book. This one has also held value pretty well. But like I said, I have only had this one um, in the collection. Not too terribly long. But like I said, if you're going to have one, you for sure have to have the other one. It's just you got to have them both. And I display them prominently side by side. I've actually had these two up for quite a while. Next, another absolutely iconic X-Men cover. Was very excited to grab this one. This was also on an IG deal, actually. I think this one also came from A1, or it might have come from Elite. X-Men 50, second appearance of Polaris, but first appearance of the block lettering. Iconic Steranko cover. Every X-Men collector wants this book in their collection. Uh, I hunted for this one for a while. I wanted a little bit higher grade, but when this one popped up, the price was too good to pass up, so I just snagged it. Uh, and these don't come up reasonably priced often. You really got to wait them out. I grabbed this one for $6.50. Uh, last sale was in December at $6.28, and that's the only sale over the last 90 days, uh, at least at a, a public auction house, not on uh, on social so still right in line with that. Like I said, these do not come to market a ton. It's off-white to white pages, but presents very well for a book from 1968. Uh, I absolutely love this one. One of the best looking X-Men books out there. Next up, one more to go. And these are probably the two coolest ones that I picked up. I did purposely save these ones for last. I'm not going to lie. This is X-Men 14. I grabbed this very early on, beginning of the year. This also came from Instagram. Uh, I think Monster Comic Shop on this one. Could be wrong. First appearance of the Sentinels. CGC 6.5. Uh, Off-white to white. Book from 1965. Color looks great. There is a big color breaking crease right there. It's hard to notice when the book's on display, but when you look up close at it, that's really the only big detraction. A lot of times on this book, what you notice is the red will be faded uh, the red is extremely bright and vibrant on this, along with the yellows of the X-Men suit. Part of the reason why I went for this one uh, in particular. Once again, I was kind of waiting for one of these to come up. I actually think for an X-Men key and a very early X-Men key, I mean, you're talking about X-Men 14 from the 60s. I think this is one of the most reasonably priced ones out there. I paid $7.25 for this right at the beginning of the year. Last sale in September, one is not sold very recently, was $5.76. That's the 90-day average as well, because that's the only one to sell in the last 90 days. Uh, the year average, the 12-month average is $8.75. So even though this is down a little bit, I feel perfectly fine about that. I do think this is one of the most affordable X-Men major keys. If, I shouldn't say if, when the X-Men come to the MCU, I can guarantee you at some point in time, they will be fighting the Sentinels. In my opinion, other than Magneto, they are the most iconic X-Men villain of all time. Uh, right from the 90s cartoon, through the comic books, uh, even in the newer movie, the Fox movie, Days of Future Past, which was actually a pretty solid, absolutely iconic X-Men villain. And then the last one, to me, is another extremely important X-Men key. Has come down a little bit compared to what I paid for my copy. Also picked this up at Heroes Con, and this is X-Men number four, CGC 4.5, off-white to white. I picked this up at Heroes Con for 2,200 bucks. Most of the issues are up here in the top right-hand corner. You can see a little chunk missing out of there. Obviously some color breaking 
creases there, but once again, generally speaking, presents extremely well. And once again, absolutely fantastic color. Uh, this book really pops. The yellow on the X-Men, the red, Magneto. So what is the significance of this book? To quote my good friend Swagglehaas, second appearance of Magneto, first appearance of Scarlet Witch, first appearance of Quicksilver, Mastermind and Toad, first appearance of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, uh, and obviously X-Men number four, extremely early book in the X-Men run. Probably... Other than X-Men number one itself, I would argue this is probably the most, the second most significant key book. Uh, just with it being the second appearance of Magneto, but then when you lump all this other stuff in there, to me, adds a ton of significance to it. I think it would be this and maybe Giant Size X-Men number one uh, in regards to battling it out for most significant X-Men key. I might put Giant Size X-Men number one before it and this next but this would definitely be very, very high. Uh, I'd be curious for your thoughts and comments down below. If you're a big X-Men collector, let's assume X-Men number one is the most important. What would be your number two on the X-Men key list? I would I would argue strongly for this one or Giant Size X-Men number one. Uh, spoilers, I do own both those, or obviously I own this one. I do also own a Giant Size X-Men number one. Um, but I think this would, it, it, like I said, it'd be really close between this and Giant Size X-Men number one. Uh, Giant Size X-Men number one is obviously way more common, but this just feels more significant. And maybe I'm just being jaded by the significance of Scarlet Witch in the MCU now. I don't know. Regardless, very high on the X-Men key list. So those are my 10 for this year. Curious, what did you have one or two really big, important comic pickups throughout the year of 2022? And it was kind of a wild ride in the comic book market. Is it corrected along with a lot of the other collectible markets, but leave in the comments down below if there's anything significant that you grabbed or that you were really excited about, even if it was some, doesn't have to be something expensive. It could be something cheaper, but these are my 10. Once again, in no particular order, but I probably would put these two in particular towards the top. I am a sucker for the older X-Men stuff, specifically this one. This was a really big one to mark off the list. It was one of the major keys that I was hunting for this year was an X-Men number four. So. That's all I have for you, boys and girls. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.